Hello class, this is Ms. Augustine, and we are going to begin our journey into chemistry, starting at the beginning with chapter one. So we always ask, what is chemistry? And it's always good to start chemistry class with the definition of what you're about to study all year, and that is chemistry. And the definition is, chemistry is the study of matter and the changes that this matter undergoes. And there are five main branches of chemistry, um, and they overlap considerably. So spoiler alert, on a chemistry test, you can expect there to be a question that asks you what is chemistry. So that's a good one to start off with a little star in your notes next to know the definition of chemistry. So let's jump into the branches. First, we'll talk about organic chemistry, and that is the study of compounds that contain carbon. So last year in biology class, you were studying living things and living things in our planet, on our planet, are carbon-based. So you studied about organic chemistry as well as biology. So examples would be propane, um, ethanol, uh, all of the alcohols that we'll talk about, fuels, etc. Those are all organic chemicals, and so studying them would be organic chemistry. That leads to inorganic chemistry, and that's the study of compounds that do not contain carbon. So things like the acids and bases that we'll talk about later this year, minerals, rocks, for instance, are in general not carbon-based. Then we'll talk about physical chemistry, and that's really the study of the behavior of chemicals. Things like, will this compound explode? If I uh, heat it, will it melt? Um, will it break? Will it stretch? Is it brittle? Is it ductile? All of those things are what physical chemists study. And that leads us to analytical chemistry, which is the study of the composition of substances. So for instance, when you find out that a substance is made up of 50% uh, uh, hydrogen and 50% oxygen, or something is composed of 80% carbon and 20% hydrogen, all of those are analytical chemistry um, experiments. So what is in a sample of water, for instance? Does it contain lead? Those are all things that an analytical chemist would look at. And any time that you go for a test that a doctor orders, for instance, blood work or an MRI, all of those are analytical chemistry tests. So someone is looking at the composition and figuring out what's in a substance or um, what's going on, for instance, inside your body. And that leads to biochemistry, which is the study of the chemistry of living organisms. So last year when you were in um, biology class, you were learning about living organisms. And all of the things you learned about last year, respiration, digestion, amino acids, genetics, all of those are examples of biochemistry. So I like to give an example that kind of goes with what's going on in the world right now. We're all dealing with the coronavirus pandemic. So in labs, you hear about people that are studying and trying to find a vaccine. So those folks that are either looking for vaccines or for treatments for people that are infected with the coronavirus, there's biochemistry involved. There's also organic chemistry involved because the vaccines are all going to be organic compounds. So working together would be your biochemists and your organic chemists. Then when they have a substance that they think would be a good candidate as a vaccine, for instance, then they would have to do analytical chemistry. They would have to start doing um, trials. So they would have to test it out first on mice, and then they might move up to larger organisms, and eventually they'll do human trials. And then someone, a physical chemist, might be looking at how the body interacts with whatever vaccine there is. So this is a good way to look at the interaction and the overlaps in the branches of chemistry. People that are working on ways to treat and prevent people from getting the coronavirus would be all of the fields that we talked about. You'd have some 
bio, not all of them, inorganic wouldn't be involved, but you'd have biochemists, analytical chemists, organic chemists, and probably physical chemists too. So I've given you a little taste of the branches of chemistry. So for now, this is Miss Augustine signing off.